Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different than what we're used to. This is going to be less of a scripted video and more of a sit down, casual tutorial slash review for this plugin. Dehancer specializes in converting uh, crispy clean digital footage for that more realistic, true to life film look. A film look that me and many other filmmakers are falling back in love with. There is something about that film look that elevates your film to that next level. And Dehancer is great at doing that. A few months ago, Dehancer did reach out to me in an email asking me to do a review. And at the time, because I wasn't doing my film, I didn't feel much need for it. However, now that I'm doing my film, I needed something to elevate it to that next level. And Dehancer is a great opportunity for that. By doing this review, I do get a free lifetime license with Dehancer. However, they are not actually paying me to do this review, and they did ask specifically to do an honest review with feedback on the negatives and the pros. And on top of that, to say thank you to all the new subscribers, they are offering a 10% discount, which you can find in the description below. Dehancer do have plugins for Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, and DaVinci Resolve. So depending on what software you use, what editing software you use, you have still have that ability to use Dehancer. However, I edit on Premiere Pro, so that is what we're gonna be working on today. When I hear the word plugins, especially plugins for my editing software, I sometimes get a little bit iffy about them because sometimes they change your entire editing layout because it's a plugin. But what I do like about Dehancer is that it is simply an effect. So if you go into the effects panel, type in Dehancer, and simply drag and drop like you would do any other effect. Okay, let's go down on the effects panel. And as you can see here, you have a lot of options and a lot of variety with Dehancer. And you have all of these, which we'll go through bit by bit and what they do specifically. So let's start off with the input. We go to input, currently it's Rec 709. And what I do like about Dehancer is that you can actually choose what camera you're using and what LUT will be applied to that clip. So black, I use a black magic. If you watch my videos, you know I use black magic. The cinema camera 6K generation five, click there. And as you can see, it applies that LUT onto your clip. Now you can adjust the color grade of this clip and you can do basic color grading using Dehancer, which we'll go through in a minute. But as you can see, this is a little bit strong and a little bit harsh, especially in the contrast. So we will fix that later down the line. When it comes to things like this, especially filmmaking and more specifically editing, you need to trust the process. And Dehancer makes that process really easy. But you have all these different cameras. You have absolutely, I mean, loads to choose from. Um, so whatever camera you're using, trust me, I'm almost positive you'll be able to find uh, the source and to, to calibrate Dehancer with what camera you're using. It even has DJI Mavericks for those drone operator shots. Okay, starting off with the exposure. Obviously, we know what exposure is. It just helps you to readjust your exposure if you didn't nail it and get it perfect first time. Color temperature, warm, cooler. As you can see already, we're having, we're having a very creative look. So as you can see, this is very basic color grading, very basic editing, which is, you know, color temperature, tint, exposure, etc. But you can change to get that, you know, initial look that you do want. Okay, so now moving on to a more exciting part, which is the film profiles. What I do like about Dehancer is that every single topic we're about to go through, you can enable and disable every single one. So if you like the look of something, but you want to remove the bloom, which we'll get to in a minute, you can do that. So let's apply the film. And as you can see, it obviously gradually changes. That's without the film and that's with. Um, and with the film that we're using is uh, Kodak Vision 3 250D. I'm not too familiar with different film stocks, obviously, because I was born in 1998 where the digital revolution was, was was happening so I don't know the different variety of film stocks but that doesn't matter because you can just simply go through every single film and as you can see there are loads of film stocks to choose from but what I found really fun was going through the different film stocks and sort of learning film again this one here the top one I know I keep saying it but that this is very much a less saturated um, film stock and more of that really really natural look where you're removing that creative contrast but again, if that's the look you're going for, then 
Dehancer can do that. I've shot on this film stock before, which is the Fuji Color C200 film stock. I've shot in this film format before with actual film, so that's the one that I'm going to go with simply because I know it. And what I like about this film section is that you can actually push it a little bit more and you can actually bring it down a little bit more if you wish. Moving on to film developer. Now, this, obviously, this isn't actually film. However, when it comes to developing film, you do have things like contrast boost, gamma correction, color separation, color boost. And if we enable this, enable, you can see that it is simply, you know, boosting the contrast to the extreme and then or reducing the contrast as well. You've also got film compression. And when we watch these big blockbuster films, we see that they are very rich with color. Um, which you can change with the color density. The expand section is simply to expand the blacks and the whites. So black points, let's increase it to 30. You can see it simply increased the blacks, 10. Again, I don't want to tweak this image too much. I'm gonna keep that at zero. Mm, again, you could maybe increase it to five, adding that extra um, density with the blacks and the shadows, but I think that's a little bit too much. But if you're going for that look, then fine. But for me, I'm going to keep that at zero just to keep a little bit of detail. Same applies for the white points. If we take that down, let's say we take it down to 50, that's a little bit extreme and you can see that it's peaking a little bit on the highlights. Um, but let's bring it down, uh, let's go 90. Uh, let's go 80. Let's go 70. You can see that it's just giving a little bit of exposure in the highlights and in those whites. Now moving on to the print section, this print section is very, very important because you can really start to delve into a more creative color grade and a more creative film stock. Let's go on to profile and you can see the different uh, film stocks that they've got. I'll go through them here right now. As you can see, you've got this one. This one, which as you can see, is very, very creative. It reminds me a lot of Saw and the way that those Saw horror films are uh, color graded. Let's go, let's, I'm going to go with this one because it is quite creative um, and it, it sort of showcases what it means by converting digital footage into film footage. Um, because this to me looks very much like it was shot on film. In relation to the print, you do have saturation. So if you do want to bring out all of the saturation, saturation and have more of a uh, black and white noir film, you can do that. Moving on to the color head, um, we do have yellow and blue, which obviously is what it says on the tin. If you want to convert it to that yellow look, or if you want to go to the other end of the spectrum and go to that blue, same again, this is very matrix. You know, let's say that right there is very, again, sore, horror, uh, matrix look um, but you can't just put a green filter on it that's what Dehancer does very well these aren't just filters these are um, color grading wheels that you can change some people might argue that this shot is too yellow and it's too saturated so if you go to the midtones and bring it down as you can see it takes away that yellow in the face and of course you've got the highlights tone which you can change but I'm going to keep it at zero so that I'm not overdoing it on the color grade and with all of this, um, in regards to the color head, you can bring down the impact of it. So let's say I've done it a bit too, I like the look, but I've done it a bit too much. You just bring it down to 50. Um, however, I'm gonna keep it at 100. Now, for me, this is the most exciting part of Dehancer, which is the film grain. This isn't just an overlay on the clip. It actually implements the film grain in the shadows and the highlights and balances them off in a natural film look. So you can see here you have a different variety of different film grains. You have the, you know, on the high end you have a really grainy, grainy look, which is a bit too grainy for me. Uh, for me, I'm going to go with the very simple um, 35 millimeter ISO 250. That gives it more of a, a neutral film grain and it's not too distracting. But if you are looking for that really, really grainy look, then you can do that as well. With the film grain, this is very exciting. The film grain, you can do custom and you can change the size of the film grain, the amount, the film resolution, the shadows, the midtones, the highlights. Like I said, every single section you can enable and disable. So you can have all of your previous color grading uh, digital to film, 
but you don't want film grain, it's absolutely fine. You just remove the film grain. And again, very similar to film grain, you have film damage. Uh, you do have all of these different presets, you know, uh, 8mm, which I'll show you a little bit here of 8mm. You see this really harsh film damage um, in this clip, which let's go back. Let's go back down to film damage. Um, you can then do customs. You can actually change the amount of dust that's on your sensor or, you know, was on your sensor. Let's say we change it to 100 scale uh, 200 let's go really extreme with it uh, size balance 75 dust enabled you can actually remove the dust you can even change the amount of hairs that are on your sensor to really really recreate what it meant to film on eight millimeter film for example don't overuse this because obviously you can see it's like very very extreme but if you were shooting a film and there was a part when the characters are using a super eight a super 80 millimeter film this would be really good at imitating that film look so yeah going down again down the film damage hair amount scratches amount total amount so you can actually change the total of all of it um but that's on the custom but let's go back on to let's say uh 35 millimeter and let's see what that looks it's more of a subtle look you can see there's little specks appearing and popping up um, now for me personally I'm not gonna be using film damage in this film because I think it could also be a little bit distracting but it's there and I think it is really really cool the film damage I haven't seen anything like that before um, in color grading but the fact that they've included it I think is a big bonus We've also got overscan, which let's enable it. You can see it just creates this, um, you know, fake uh, film, undeveloped film. Um, you have all these different overlays, you know, Super 16, Super 8, which again is very, I think is very cool. And it matches your Premiere Pro, um, how you've got the timeline and the sequence settings. You've got widescreen, so you've got all these different, quite creative. This is something that I find very cool, and I know that DaVinci Resolve have this, but where I use Premiere Pro, I don't have this. But being able to put false color on and seeing what is exposed and what is not exposed um, is, is very cool. And you can do clipping indicator as well. And the outputs, this is something that when I was um, going through it, I was like, well, hopefully I should be able to control overall the whole thing. Um, without having to change the opacity of an adjustment layer, for example. But Dehancer allows you to do control the total output. So if I go 100, obviously, you know, if I go down to 50, I can remove that and just bring that whole grade down to 50. Again, giving it that completely different look. This is very cool. And I know I keep saying this is very cool. This is very cool. But I genuinely do find this very cool. The LUT generator. So you can actually um, create a LUT that you really like and you can actually generate a LUT, uh, export LUT and create a LUT for yourself and create your own LUT pack. And here you have it, the difference. This is just the clip with a uh, generic Blackmagic video to film LUT um, on it. And then this is the same clip again with the Dehancer color grading um, profiles attached to it. As you can see, it does give that film look and it does, does give that unique flavor to the clips in terms of the color, contrast, film grain, and I'm very excited to color grade the rest of my film using Dehancer. This was a very quick tutorial going through Dehancer, but things like this does, especially color grading, does take time. So looking at this, I would like to spend more time with it and to get it as perfect as possible, step away from it, come back to it, reanalyze it, see what can be improved. But it's important to know to go through each section bit by bit and make sure it's the best that it possibly can. Because of the current age of filmmaking, anybody can be a filmmaker because of the power of smartphone cameras. And because of this, Dehancer have created an app for iPhone and it's compatible with iPad as well. You can now film Apple ProRes 422 4K and this app allows you to color grade that raw footage straight from the app. And it can also do photos as well if you want a frame of reference for when editing on desktop, for example. It pretty much has the same features as the desktop version, but it's a little bit more portable. 
Obviously it's on the phone, which means you can color grade on the go if you need to. If I just quickly go through it now, obviously you have uh, these different um, presets, which again, makes it very, very easy to just pop on these presets and then color grade it from there. It is important to note that Dehancer isn't just an ordinary app with a bunch of filters that you can just, you know, whack on um, and it's done. You can go onto the edit and you can basically, what we went through on the desktop, you can go through these different prints. And then same as the desktop, you can just adjust these prints how you wish. The app is a very streamlined version of the desktop version, making it a lot quicker. The video editing also features Gateweave and Film Breathe as well. And this is before and this is after. As you can see, very quick grade. I can say that this is a honest review. I do really like Dehancer. I like how you can convert digital to film because I think digital can be sometimes too clean and too sharp and I want to have a little bit of character in my image and Dehancer is great at doing that. It gives you a lot of freedom and a lot of options which I really like, especially as an editor. If you are working on a film and you're thinking about creating that film look, use the discount code, check out Dehancer and see if you can improve your film for next time. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.